Okay guys, welcome to episode two of Becoming a Black Belt. Uh, in the previous episode we had Professor Michael Dorr. Episode two here features one of my sustainable jiu-jitsu black belts. He's now a studio owner himself of Flow Jiu-Jitsu, an official affiliate of Sustainable, Professor Ben Connell. Amen. And Benny also started with me at 17 mm. and now is 30. 30. The beard says 45. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. But it's an absolute pleasure to have you, bro. So, obviously, of the, as with the last one, we wanted to just sit you down and discuss you've had a certain journey to Black Belt mm -hmm. and then the beginning starts again. And uh, we want to have a chat to you about your opinion and what Jiu Jitsu and becoming a Black Belt has made a difference to you in your life and on the mats. Lovely. So, 17, you came to the gym. You want to be an ultimate fighter? Yeah, mate, absolutely. I think I had dreams of being the next middleweight world champion. Um, I came in with my brother Michael, and I think every session was a, was a way, hopefully I could prove myself by catching him with something and putting him down. And The older brother. Yeah, yeah. and that was just, I don't know, like I just thought that's what I wanted to do, and that was where I was going. And, what better way to do it than to throw hands as hard as possible in the gym and, until someone taps you slightly harder and you realize it's not so nice to train like that all the time. <laughs> and we had to do a lot of exercise, flipping tires, hitting hammers. Yeah. And in fact, you did have spunk, mate. Always been a gentleman. Uh, and then your direction changed when you thought, mm, I might just uh, train for train's sake and enjoy it and become a martial artist, so to speak. Yeah. What, where was your stage of getting into jiu-jitsu? Because you started a lot with boxing. Mm -hmm. I think I kind of pushed jiu-jitsu back as much as I could. Um, I didn't see jiu-jitsu the way I see it now back then. Um, I, you know, I saw the striking arts as tough uh, and maybe jiu-jitsu is not as, as tough an art as mm -hmm. the striking arts and I, and I saw that's where my development and that's where my evolution would come from would be boxing and kickboxing. Um, and I think reluctantly I let you push me into a session a cup like a year or so in um, I think just to satisfy the requests to, to give it a try and uh, it very quickly took a turn to uh, constantly training in jiu-jitsu after that but we never forget the hands no. you always keep the hands I always keep the hands to the, it's a necessity mm -hmm. and it's fun and it's a beautiful art in itself and it plugs in beautifully to Jiu Jitsu anyway, because every fight's gonna start standing mm -hmm. and we're not naive, we need to have the skill set of striking as soon as it touches it's Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. What was your first experience with Jiu Jitsu? You had the gi on, no gi, doesn't really matter, Jiu Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu. What was your first thought? Do you think uh, when you first rolled, you used too much power? Do you think it was about going for the win, uh, going for the submission first, or it's not at all what it is now? I think. When I first started, I still remember in the garage in um, in the old house. The, I'd, I'd watched a few UFCs and probably thought I was a bigger hero than I was at the time. Um, you know, I've seen I've seen a few submissions put on. I can I can do that, and I think I just simply remember going for triangles and arm bars and having absolutely no luck or or getting close ish to a position, but then just couldn't understand why I couldn't finish it off. Mm. Um, and I think that was my whole mentality was, oh, Jiu Jitsu is just about submitting someone, um, not, not necessarily controlling them and, or, or you know, manhandling them on the ground with, mm. with positioning and control. Um, and I was just, just trying to swing up aimless submissions time after time and just getting denied and denied and then quickly realized that my ground game wasn't as good as I had Envision <laughs> may believe it was in my head, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's that were, I think that's quite a normal thing for at the, at the beginning, anyway. Yeah. So, what, what's your, the difference in how you used to look at Jiu Jitsu? So, you said about uh, just flinging on submissions and going for submissions. What would be your take on that nowadays, though, as a black belt? Yeah, I think definitely the way I teach it to my guys as well is that there's two sides to Jiu Jitsu there's attacking and there's defending. Defending is a systematic breakdown of the controls that your opponent has on you until you can eventually get a reversal, um, get out of the position you're in or get a submission yourself. And attacking is just like an obstacle course. It's a systematic advancing past particular obstacles that your opponent is providing you to get to a desired 
position, goal, or achieve an attack that you're looking to deploy? Yep. No, well said. And how important do you think efficient efficiency is for that effectiveness? Because if you're not efficient, like you said, you're going to throw it up, and it's not just efficient for getting the submission per se, to get the finish and get the stop, but also for you getting injured in between this. Mm -hmm. If you're going, aim, throwing things up, and you hurt your back, and you hurt your knees, it's probably not as fast. Nah. Uh, that's one thing I've seen a difference with you, you become more sustainable, you become more efficient, you become more effective, or you definitely become more effective through that. That's a big difference. Yeah. Um, so as the journey continues, do you think that's something you would stick with and continue to be more efficient, effective in your way of doing things? Absolutely. I think real jujitsu is, there's no time limits in real jujitsu. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't got a style of performance or strategy to deploy and implement attacks, defense, uh, submissions, controls for hours, then you haven't got a jiu-jitsu game. So mm -hmm. I think doing things right, doing them proper, doing them as few times as possible, obviously, you're not always gonna advance the position you want the first time and you might have to reset, get your setups, get your controls and, and try it again. Um, but I think, yeah, being efficient and calming down, my biggest thing was spending so much energy. I used to try mm -hmm. and muscle out, I used to try and, I, I wanted to achieve my objective the first time every time. Mm. Uh, and that was a massive mental hurdle for me when I couldn't do that. Because it would be, I would feel disheartened by that when there was really no need to be disheartened by that because yeah. there's barely anyone in the world who gets every position they want every time the first time. And that's how you learn though, isn't it? Exactly. If you don't get there, you don't get there. Did you go through a slump where you were like, felt like you were, Hitting the brick wall? <laughs> yeah, I went through a few slumps. I probably went through a slump in every belt. Yeah. Um, where I'd, I'd come into the belt and I'd be a little, I'd just gone from being, you know, a four stripe on whatever I was and mm. I, was, I was a, you know, a big fish in a little pond and then all of a sudden you get a new belt and you're excited but then you're a little fish in a bigger pond again and mm. then you have to start the building process and I think probably midway through Actually, it was probably just before the transition into the new belt, I'd always go through a little slump yep. and I'd question myself and I'd, I'd wonder if I was ready for the step up to the next belt um, and I'd question my game, but then I would accept that and I'd come to terms with just, you know, my jiu-jitsu is as good as my jiu-jitsu is. If you put in the hours and you put in the time, it'll be as good as it needs to be. You know, the only reason to doubt your jiu-jitsu is if you're not putting the hours on the mat, and mm. then you know that your jiu-jitsu is not going to be where it needs to be because you know you're not giving it what it needs. Yeah, and you're sticking to what you should be sticking <laughs> to. And that's a lesson in itself though, you know, I think um, you know people def will define the, their sessions on how many times they tap someone on the mats mm. instead of uh, what about how well did you handle it. So if you're under Benny for the last five minutes, don't worry about if you couldn't get out, how well did you handle it? Mm. And were you safe and can you breathe? Oh, no problems is a human body and he knows what he's doing it's not going to be easy to get off mm. so i think that's majorly important yeah and then and talking about the slumps i think everybody and also the doubts when you go into belts but that's uh you go to blue belt you go to purple belt it's the beginning of the journey i've seen you in a short time of x amount of months as a black belt even develop in those few months that's strange right yeah. like, oh, i don't know with it but i can see it you can now see it and you're going to see the people that you develop as well it's an organic thing, as long as the environment's there. How, how important do you think an environment is for Jiu-Jitsu, or for any martial arts, but obviously we're talking uh, Jiu-Jitsu. It's, I think it's probably the most important thing, to, a single thing to people's development, um, is the environment and the way the Jiu-Jitsu is taught. Um, I think we've all been, or seen gyms where there's a bit of that meathead mentality to it. Um, you know, and jiu-jitsu is meant to be the gentle art, and I think if you take that approach to it, you're just you're trying to sharpen people, and it, it just doesn't work all the time, especially mm. with jiu-jitsu. You need to have that environment where you cultivate learning and growth, um, and you give people, you keep them on the edge of the pressure that's just too much, and you help them learn, and yeah. then as they're ready, you step that up bit by bit. You know, you can go too hard. You don't learn anything spending 30 minutes under someone getting pounded, mm. you know, as a white belt. Yeah. You, you leave that and 
you kind of, yeah, now I know I can get the shit kicked out of me for mm. a half an hour, <laughs> but I don't, I didn't quite learn any escapes. And yeah. I think you've got to, it's, there's give and take in Jiu Jitsu. You've got to, whatever you give to the program, you give to your clients and they give to you. It's, it's, a, it's about that back and forth and yeah. helping them grow as well. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to be vulnerable. Mm. To be vulnerable, you know, you've know, got to trust. And if you don't trust the person you're rolling with, mm. I feel like Benny's going to break my neck every time <laughs> I try something, <laughs> then you're not going to try it. Yeah. And, that, and it's imperative. So the, the trust is absolutely amazing. And we look around and I sit in my studio, you sit in yours, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing to see people where there is that trust. But make no mistake, there's the functionality. So if people think if you roll smart, intelligent is not soft. Intelligent is deadly, it's dangerous, and it's downright functional, but it's also fun. And on top of that, I think, you know, the physical skills are only one thing, because there is a physical, mental, and emotional component to this. So physicality is one thing, but what about the mental and emotional? How important do you think that having a controlled mind and controlling your emotions and uh, well, we've all been there, but I've seen you go through some things, uh, you know, with frustration and whatnot, but that's good, because if you don't feel your emotions, how are you gonna get in touch with your emotions? But, go back to what we said, you've gotta make sure you feel them in the correct manner. Not too much stimulus, not too little stimulus. And I think that's it, that's it, man. Absolutely, yeah. So the three tiers, there's three tiers to the jujitsu. The jujitsu never changes for whatever you wanna use it for, but there is an, Jiu-Jitsu in its art form, which is encompassed to everything. Jiu-Jitsu, and some people like more, more use it for sport, um, and obviously self-defense. I think the art and the self-defense is absolutely imperative. I don't think you do have to compete. If you don't want to compete, you don't have to compete. If you do want to compete, I think it's fine as long as it's done in a healthy manner, but I don't think you should be missing the art of self-protection. What's your thought on this? Yeah, I don't think that competing in something necessarily gives you an extra element to your jiu-jitsu. Uh, I think it can be a valuable tool if that's the direction you want to go in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've rolled with people who have competed before and felt I was able to kind of do what I wanted in those exchanges, you know, given that I hadn't competed in jiu-jitsu. Um, but you can still have performance rounds on the mats in a controlled manner outside of competition. I think the key thing is is the environment you train in Jiu-Jitsu. If you have a good environment to train, you get all aspects yeah. in Jiu-Jitsu. You get your play um, where you can have time to manipulate positions and do things free from worrying about injury and, and all those things. Or you can have performance rolling where you step the intensity up, you know. There's no malice, but there's intent to, to finish and, uh, and, and to get to the positions you want. And I think as long as you have a good balance between the drilling and the rolling and the, and the play and the performance, you get everything you need in a good gym. Yeah, and I don't think it has to be either or. I'm not, I'm not against anything, but all oh, jiu-jitsu is beautiful mm -hmm. to me. But yeah, I just think it's, you should hit the nail on the head is the environment and what you're learning. In. And the self-defense though is imperative because it is a martial art for a reason. And I think it needs to be, needs to be honored. And also that's part of what we just said before, you know they say you no know, people are gonna hit you in the face. <laughs> so I think that's an imperative to, to, to understand. Mm -hmm. On the other side of it, jujitsu the art. How much does it do for your life? Mm -hmm. What has it done for you physically, mentally, emotionally in your life off the mats? I was actually thinking about that on the way here and I was thinking that there's kind of three aspects to jujitsu that have really helped me but I don't think people off the mat or people that don't do jujitsu really see. There's the physical element, you know, some people go to the gym, mm -hmm. some people play a sport, you know, I, I like to do, you know, all of them, but jujitsu is my, my sport of choice. Um, it keeps me fit, it keeps my body healthy. Um, then there's the, the mental side of the, and the learning of jujitsu where you're learning new concepts, you're learning, you know, you're drilling how to do new moves. Um, but you're also problem solving in high stress scenario, mm. which is you know invaluable for your job and everything you do outside. You're having that capacity to stop, slow down, take a breath, look at what's given to you, and then problem solve your way through that while someone's trying to take your arm or your head off. You know, like it's 
I don't know a scenario where you do that outside in your job. You know, you might have stressful days, but this is kind of the epitome of what stress is um, and thinking your way through it. And then there's the spiritual side and the, and the meditation that comes from jujitsu. It's that some days you get on the mat and you don't get what you want. Mm. You get what you need from mm. the mat. You know, you, you, sometimes you don't, things don't go your way and you get upset and I still laugh at the time I finished my sparring round and I walked off angry with how I performed. I punched the wall and as I punched the wall, I slipped on the rain that had come under the garage and ended up on my butt. <laughs> and and then I laughed, but that was kind of, that was, I think that was the martial arts telling me what I needed that day. And that was calm down. Like you're getting what you need, not what mm. you think you want. Um, and that's that meditation that comes with it is once you can accept that <laughs> the tool and the mats are going to teach you what you need to know that day and you just accept, you know, that might be a bad day and you just accept that for what it is. It was a big lesson today. Yeah. Um, and then some days you come in and you're Superman and you accept those for what they are too. And that was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it together pretty well at the moment and you appreciate those days when you get it. Yeah, and that's beautifully said. And maybe that's the same, uh, well, it is the parallels to life because maybe some days you wake up and you're not so, not so good. Everything today yeah. is not so good, but the next day you're Superman. <laughs> so the, the, the trick is to hold on, keep moving forward, because you're going to have better days all the time and the days that are not so good whether it's on the mats or off the mats they're all the lessons as well Absolutely. and it's whether or not you give up on those days whether it's on the mats or off the mats or you stick it out and quite clearly you've stuck it out yeah. as well. and there so you've become recently one of my uh, affiliates for sustainable jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. and with this beautiful gear you're wearing uh, flow jiu-jitsu yeah made by humble yeah nice little touches on it yeah what an yeah. absolute cool brand so what's your plans for flow jiu-jitsu uh, where is flow jiu-jitsu flow jiu-jitsu is in june love it's actually a few streets from hq which is nice you know where we're right around the corner it's a it's very much like an everybody loves raymond feel you know you can walk <laughs> down the street knock on the door and there you are but um i guess flow jiu-jitsu came about because i think for years i just tussled with wanting to do something with my martial arts but not knowing what I wanted to do and then bang it hit me one day that I think I want to teach jiu-jitsu you know friends have been asking me for a while to start teaching them you know bits and pieces and it just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks one day that I wanted to get involved so you know smack bang I think two days later we had logos drawn up we had friends the uh, wonderful creative Andrea put together a, an awesome design for me um, off a drawing and a sketch I did on a napkin in a pub. Um, and it just grew from there, you know. And Ace put together some merch for us. Um, and then we had Humble put together the gear and now clients are coming through and it's just a, it's a beautiful journey. Another, another dimension to the Jiu Jitsu gang. Yeah, and it's beautiful to see as well and it's absolute I've been doing this for a long time. I'm doing this for the rest of my life. This is what I'm meant to be here for. And now to see you share it, it's an absolute pleasure to see people uh, grow. Mm -hmm. You have something special. We have something special to share. And we share it with people. And all you ask is they just keep coming back. Yeah. Because they've got to go through all the things that you just discussed, the ups and the downs. Just keep assisting, keep having fun. And it's the most rewarding experience mm -hmm. as a coach and to see everybody develop. And uh, are you above Mobius? Mobius Health and Performance? Oh, uh, Dan, the man, the strength guru, Dan runs, uh, runs Mobius. Uh, he was wonderful enough to have me upstairs. Um, and I can really see some, like my Jiu Jitsu took another level as well when I started taking my strength a lot more seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, strength in my legs, strength in my core. Um, and he's just a knowledge base of, of strength and, and programming. So, I mean, what a what an absolute pleasure to, to be able to join our kind of businesses in some capacity. And yeah, and I know my guys are better on the mats for having him downstairs too, you know? Yeah, and I don't know, I've only known him for a short time, but he seems like an absolute top gentleman. Yeah. Um, nice energy, beautiful human. And um, the environment when you walk in downstairs to Mobius is conducive to the flow jiu jitsu upstairs mm. because as you said before it is all about environment mm. and so yeah it's a it's, it's a great spot to have it and you get the best of both worlds you got that so what's your future plans for jiu jitsu my friend i'm taking it as it comes at the moment um obviously i'm taking clients on uh, we have our schedule for the evenings at the moment 
Um, and I'm kind of, uh, I'm not putting any requirements on it just yet. You know, we're in strange times with, with COVID and, and people going into lockdown. So I'm just super grateful to be on the mats um, and to have people coming through to teach. And I'm, and I'm stoked, I'm ecstatic that they're enjoying their jujitsu and they're really enjoying the lessons. And for me, that's the most important part. So I'll see where this goes, you know, hopefully it turns into big, beautiful things like, like sustainable has as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I'm just open to, to taking the future as it comes and progressively growing the client base at Flow and, uh, and giving them everything they need. And I think that's the best way to do it. So everything's organic. It's all from love. It's all from pure passion. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is business. That's how the bit the world is run. But the easy bit is the passion, the love, and it's the people. Because without the people, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I've always had an envision for sustainable juice to have affiliates and for people to be working with me and continue to work with me, even as a black belt and beyond, uh, for them to share and say, I'm only one person. You're another special person, and we have others that we're going to see in the interviews as well in the future, and and for people just in the gym, not just black belts. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's an honour to have you a, as an affiliate, an honour to have you as one of my black belts. Because I've known you for a long time. I've known you from a skinny young man <laughs> to a big fat one. And I do remember saying to you one day, I said to you, Benny, you're going to be bigger, stronger, and hairier. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have the big beard anymore. We have a big tash instead. Yeah. But you are a, you're a good man, mate. You're a, you're a gentleman. And um, I, I do say from the heart, it is, a, it is an honor to have you on the mats and sharing your knowledge. And um, yeah, whether it's Jubla or it's anywhere else, mate. It's, it's all love because we're all we're all one anyway mm -hmm. and uh you can only be in so many places so many times so to actually have other people out there sharing the message is a beautiful thing love it i appreciate you brother thanks for thank man. you so much for your time Cheers. man